a lot of you have been actually asking, and um, it came from uh, the fact that, um, you know, we were talking about the Ashley Madison hack where, you know, millions of people, uh, personal information, credit cards were uh, posted on the web, and there was talk about something called the dark web, or the deep web, and, you know, it sounds so mysterious just by the name, dark web, sounds very bizarre, sounds like this place where, you know, only the expert users and the bad guys actually know how to access, and, you know, we're kind of out of this. So what is the dark web and the deep web? Basically, um, it's a encrypted side to the internet. Now, it is part of the internet. Uh, people will say, you know, I've heard people saying, oh, wow, it's that it's kind of a special web browser in its uh, own sense. And basically, uh, well, no, it's not a, uh, you know, special internet that only, you know, weird people can access. It's, it's part of the internet. It's just that it's encrypted. And the dark web is encrypted, and the surface web, or the regular web that we all use, is what we call, or they call, the open web, because it's non-encrypted. So when you do a Google search, well, it's technically not encrypted in between. Now, yeah, there are some encryption now more and more on the surface web, because of, you know, the NSA and all of that. Some companies start, started, you know, using uh, encryption. But most of the surface web, the, oh, the, the regular web, is unencrypted. So... When the internet started, basically what happened is that people, some people felt that it needed some kind of, you know, special spot where you can hide your personal info and uh, basically, you know, just not let everybody know where you are. Uh, on the surface web, you know, if you do a search of where am I, you're going to be pretty uh, surprised to see that it's going to pinpoint where you live. And um, in the deep web, what happens is the IP address and all of that information is encrypted and changed. So your IP is bounced around so many times that it actually, at the other end, when you go to access a website, gives information that's false. Basically, it's going to say, oh, you're somewhere else. And by the way, if you use the dark web and you ask, where am I? Um, and I did that experiment. It actually told me uh, two times I asked. Once it told me it was I was in somewhere in the southwest of the United States. And another time that I've tried, it told me, oh, you're uh, in Europe. So it gives you an idea. It actually, you know, spoofs everything so that you just can't be followed or tracked. And the deep web is actually something that doesn't track you also. But the deep web or the dark web cannot be accessed typically from a regular browser. Now, there is a portal on the internet where you can use, for example, Google Chrome or Internet Explorer to access. But the best way to access to be anonymous and to stay anonymous is to use a special browser called Tor Browser. And this Tor Browser is a special browser that connects and, um, you know, is totally encrypted when you're going on the dark web. And what's interesting is that the Tor Browser also lets you go to regular websites. But because it uses specific spots on the net to connect before, it actually will give false information to, say, Google or whatever website you go to so that it can track you and know where you are. So that's another interesting capability of the Tor Browser. The uh, Tor Browser connects to what we also call, because the dark web is also called, the Onion Router. And this is another name for the same connection. And that's why many of the websites on the network for um, the dark web will end at .onion. These are, every website that ends with dark, .onion is a dark website. Now, what's the difference between dark web and deep web? The dark web is that encrypted space on the internet for these websites. The deep web is all the websites that aren't in any search engine because they try to stay anonymous and they don't want to be tracked. Now, there is a search engine for that. Now, how do you access the dark web or the deep web? First of all, you need the Tor browser that I've shown you, and I'm going to put the link to the download if you ever want to try it. Now, I've got it here on my desktop. Here's the Tor browser that I'm starting. And it is a little different. It takes a little more time to start because you see here it makes a connection to the internet in a very unique way. Instead of using your regular internet, it will actually go connect to a um, Tor or a Onion server to really make you um, as anonymous as possible. Now, once you are here, you can actually go to different websites. There's a lot of websites on the uh, internet for... Um, Tor, and you can, you know, just enter any website that ends in Onion, so, um, first of all, you need to know a few websites if you want to use it, you can also, um, you know, try 
some website. There's um, I think it's the hiddenwiki.org website that has um, a list of different websites. It's not hidden wiki, but it's uh, something like that. I, I just forgot the. So basically, on the uh, dark web, you have that onion website. Okay, it's the hidden here. That's the hidden wiki. Org. Now this website has a list of different websites you can access, and if you notice, every website that is on the dark web um, ends at dot onion. That's the first thing that you notice when you see, you're on a website and you see it's dot onion. That means you're on the dark web. That means that website is encrypted, and uh, you know it's kind of hard to know where you are. So let's uh, check. For example, there's DuckDuckGo search engine here that you can click, and as you see here, it's gonna connect. Now connections are a little longer on the Tor browser for a simple reason because your IP and your connection bounces around and many 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 different servers it will take longer usually to connect to a website because it take you know instead of having a direct route it takes a detour but that's to keep you anonymous and at the other end it doesn't say that you're in Montreal it says you're somewhere in the world but it's kind of hard to know because your IP at the other end isn't the IP that you have typically at home um, another search engine here is Torch. Torch is a Tor search engine and this one what it does is it goes on the web and tries to find dot onion websites and so you can you know search for all sorts of information say you want to have information about um, uh, I don't know let's see if there's weather stuff on the end. It's pretty much everything you know what on the dark web you will have a lot of websites that do pretty much the same thing as the regular web. The only thing is that these websites are going to um, you know, and uh, with that dot onion and have different ways and you know what one of the things that is Interesting when you look at this it shows you so much how it actually the internet looked at the beginnings the first websites and the first places we would go to so What's the you know, what are the bad things about the, the dark web first of all? Um, you got to know that 90% According to, you know, these are real statistics. Uh, according to uh, some of the statistics we've seen, 90% of the dark web is actually okay. It's not uh, anything bad. It's people like you and me that just never want to be tracked and just want to use that part of the internet so that nobody knows. But the last 10% is the bad guys. And typically, most of the bad guys and most of the hackers know about this and know of specific spots where they're going on the web. Another uh, in, uh, idea behind this is um, I was... A few months ago, ago I, I was reading an article about you know how a, a lot of bad guys are actually selling and buying drugs through this dark web. Why? Because it's totally anonymous. When you buy the drugs, um, everything is encrypted. Nobody sees what you're doing, and uh, nobody knows where you are. So um, you know, even the seller, so uh, the seller that wants to sell drugs will sell it there because he knows he can't. It's very difficult to get tracked. Now, I'm not using the word impossible here because nothing's impossible but it's very difficult to get tracked here so <coughs> sorry you can get the Tor browser and go yourself to um, the websites in the Tor um, in the onion router or dark web I will be posting of course the link in the um, description of the video for the Tor browser uh, one word of caution you are entering an area of the internet that is different and that might even be shocking to some people and um, you are also more subject to attract attention from the um, you know, government security agencies. So if you are using Tor browser and going to the deep web, the NSA might suddenly find it a little interesting to check what you're doing on them. Uh, same for Canada, same for pretty much every country. Uh, personally, I don't care because I don't do illegal stuff. And I think it is a legitimate use of the internet. Why not? Why can't we be anonymous? And um, you know, have everything we do encrypted. I think it's fair use, and I think the dark web is is there to stay. And actually, it's even going to grow probably as we get less and less privacy in the regular web. More and more people will go to the dark web. You know what's keeping the dark web still dark and mysterious? It's still complex to actually go through that dark web, and so for most people, it's just too complicated, and they'd rather use the regular web. So uh, this is a little bit of uh, information on what's the deep and dark web and um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, please subscribe to our channel. You'll be informed when new videos online. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, anything you want to know about um, Windows, about you know your PC, maybe you have problems, share it with us. We'll try to help you if we can. And hopefully you 
enjoy our videos and we'll come back soon. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again.